Welcome viewers to the first segment of the fourth lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of linear algebra. In this lecture, we first will have a look how to interpret matrix multiplication A times B as linear combination of the rows of this latter matrix B. Okay, so let's have this example of uh, of A being an M times N matrix and B being an N times P matrix. Let me write down those matrices explicitly. This is the matrix A, A11, all the way up to A1N. This is the first row of this matrix A, the second row being A21, all the way up to A2N. And finally, we have the mth row of this matrix A, which is going to be AM1 all the way up to AMN. Okay. So this is the matrix A and this gets multiplied with the matrix B. The first row being B11 all the way up to B1P B21 all the way up to B2P and finally we have the the <coughs> nth row which is BN1 all the way up to BNP okay So there is a well-defined matrix multiplication between these two matrices to result in a matrix of uh, size M times P, right? Okay, so you can write this, this multiplication as uh, you, you keep this matrix A the same, which is A11 to A1N then the second row A21 to um, A2N and the mth row being AM1 all the way up to AMN. Okay. This is the A matrix and then I write the matrix B as a collection of rows, right? Row matrices. So beta 1 is the first row of the matrix B, beta 2 is the second row of the matrix B, and beta N is the nth row of matrix B, and then the, the resulting matrix turns out to be, um, the first row is going to be A11, beta 1, you can check, plus all the way up to A1N times beta N. Okay. So it's, it, this sum means the sum of some, some row vectors. Okay. It's a linear combination of row vectors, N row vectors. Okay. Similarly, we can get the second row of the resulting matrix. A21 times beta 1 all the way up to A2n times beta n and the final row is going to be AM1 beta 1 plus all the way up to AMN times beta n. Okay. Right. Okay, so here, B 
beta 1 all the way up to beta n are the n rows of the n times p matrix this matrix n times p matrix b so like we said before hence the matrix a times b has size m times p right this is the size of the resulting matrix a times b whose whose each of the m rows so these are the rows of the resulting matrix whose each of the m rows is given by gamma i where i runs from 1 to m is equal to sum over j's running from 1 to n a i j times beta j okay here i is between 1 and n okay so this is how the rows of the resulting matrix look like okay and these multiplications are are defined in the in the field over which the matrices the underlying matrices are defined okay the multiplication in the field okay So let me erase this front matter. Therefore, each row of the matrix A times B denoted by is gamma i's i between 1 and m is a linear combination of the rows beta i okay so these these beta i's where I here for this beta i's lie between 1 and n of the matrix B. Beta i are the rows of the matrix B. Okay, good. So this was important. Now we'll see an example how to do that. Explicitly. So this is our first example of the ongoing lecture. Suppose we have a, have an explicit two times three matrix, which is going to be our matrix A. One, three, two, 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 one. This is the two times three matrix we have. Then we have a three times four matrix. Two, three, one, one is the first row of the latter matrix. And the second row is one, two, three, two. And the final row is two, one, two, zero. Okay. So this is a matrix of size two times three. And the latter matrix is of size three times four. So the multiplication is defined and the we expect the matrix finally to be of size 2 times 4, okay? Good. So, um, uh, so according to 
what we have discussed so far, we are going to have the first row of the resulting matrix in the following way. 1 gets multiplied, this, the, the scalar 1 gets multiplied with the, the whole row, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1 times 2, 3, 1, 1, and that gets added to 3 times the second row of the letter matrix, 1, 2, 3, 2, and 2 gets multiplied with uh, the final row of the letter matrix, 2, 1, 2, 0. So this is how we get the first row, which is uh, um, which is a 1 times 4 matrix, or just a row vector consisting of 4 columns. Okay? Now, the you, one can multiply, one can figure out the second row of the resulting matrix in the following way. So two gets multiplied with the with the first row of the letter matrix. Uh, two yield two times two three one one, and then that gets added to two times one two three two plus one times. Two one two zero. Okay. So so that we finally have. Okay. So let me do the intermediate step by multiplying it, multiplying each value here with the with the corresponding rows to have two three one one added with two. 3696 added to uh, 4240. This is the first row, and the second row being 4622 two, added to 2464, four. and finally one has. Two one two zero. Okay, so the final matrix is as follows. So I'm going to add these three rows. I mean, uh, three row vectors to each other to have a final row consisting of four columns. Uh, That gives us nine. Then I have eleven. Three added to six is nine, and nine plus two is eleven. Then we have one, nine, ten, ten plus four, fourteen. And finally, one has one plus six, seven, seven plus zero is seven. And for the second row, four, two, six, six, two, eight. And then 6, 4, 10, 10 plus 1, 11. And then 2 plus 6, 8, 8 plus 2, 10. And finally, one has 2 plus 4, 6, 6 plus 0, 6. Okay. So this is the final matrix. You can do a straightforward matrix, matrix multiplication between these two matrices and to, to, to find this uh, matrix as well. to double check that this this method indeed works okay all right good now we have our first theorem of this lecture let me state the theorem and then I'll prove it theorem 1 it's about associativity of matrix multiplication if a b c our matrices over the field F such that the products B times C and A 
getting multiplied with b times c are defined okay so what does it mean it means that b times c is only defined when the num number of columns of b is the same as the number of rows of c okay so given that b b times c is defined and well and this is going to be defined when the number of columns of a is the same as the number of rows of the matrix b times c okay so we are given the fact that these two matrices these two matrix multiplications are defined okay so if this is the case then so are the products a times b and a b times c these two matrices are also defined and These, these matrix is supposed to be the same as this matrix. A times BC is equal to AB times C. This is what we need to prove. Okay, so let us jump to the proof. Suppose B is an n times p matrix okay it means that b has n number of rows and p number of columns so we are given that b times c is defined since b times c is defined and b has p number of columns c has to have p number of rows right c is a matrix with p rows okay and so if if c has a uh, Okay, so um, so this resulting matrix B times C, how many rows are there? How many rows are there in this matrix? Since BC is defined, BC is going to have as many rows as B does, right? So B times C is going to have N rows as well, right? And B times C has N rows. Now since A times B C is defined and A has uh, given that A has N columns so we are assuming it since uh, okay uh, all right no so since this guy is defined the number of um, rows of B times C is going to be exactly the number of columns of A and since the number of rows of BC is is n, a sh a must have n number of columns so that a times BC is well defined. Okay, so we must have a 
having a number of columns. Okay? So, without loss of generality, loss of generality, we may assume that the size of size of a is m times n okay we are supposed to uh, supposed to have a to have n number of columns okay we, we assume that it it is of size m times n okay thus a times b exists a is of size m times n and b is of size n times p so that a times b exists and it is a matrix of size m times p hence a times b exists and is n m times p matrix okay hence the matrix ab times c okay so this is the size of ab and and what is c C is a matrix with P rows, right? So the matrix A times B has P columns and C has P rows. Therefore, A, B times C is well defined. Okay. This is good. Now, let me get rid of this part to show that indeed A times BC is the same as AB times C one must show that they are equal entry wise right the ij entry of the matrix on the left hand side should be equal to the ij entry of the matrix on the right hand side this is what we need to show for each I, J. Okay. Now let us get started with the left hand side, which is A times B, C sub I, J. The I, J at entry of the left hand side matrix. Okay. And this is uh, by the definition of matrix multiplication can be written as the sum over R A I R times B C R J okay R, R is running from 1 to N okay so this is going to be equal to the sum over R Okay, and we also break this thing using the definition of matrix multiplication which is um, right the number of um, so it the sum has to be taken over the number of columns of B or the number of rows of C right which is like, you know, there are P number of rows of um, 
the num uh, p number of rows of c. So k run sh k should run from one to p, and the first entry is supposed to be r k, and the second entry is going to be c c sub uh, k j, right? Good. So this is going to be equal to, so I'm just taking these two sums on the far left, the, the two summation symbols are taken to the far left. And then I group the AIRs and the BRK together. AIR and BRK get rid of this bracket for the moment and then this is ckj I write the intermediate line and then then I group uh, so I leave this k k sum and first take the r sum okay by grouping all the a i r s and b r b's together and then this remaining CKJ and using again the definition of matrix multiplication this turns out to be a B the a B sub so what did I do B sub R K this has to be K So this is going to be AB sub IK. Okay. And then I have CKJ. So now K runs from 1 to P so that the resulting entry is going to be AB times C sub IJ. This is actually the right hand side here. QED. So, indeed, matrix multiplication is associative. Right. All right. Now, there is a remark. Remark to this uh, theorem one. The relation A times BC is equal to AB times C implies that linear combinations of linear combinations of the rows of C. So this is the left hand side. This is how you interpret the left hand side of this equality. So you first take B times C which is the linear combination of the rows of C and then take the the linear combination of the of the linear combinations of the rows that you get out of the multiplication of these two matrices okay so this is how you read it the left hand side is read as the linear combinations of linear combinations of the rows of c okay and the right hand side is read off as this linear combinations are again So A times B is a matrix, okay, and that gets multiplied with C, meaning that you are just taking some linear combinations of the rows of C. So are again linear 
combinations of the rows of C. Alright, so all right, so this is the remark, so let me get rid of it. Now P is a given matrix. And C is obtained from B. C is obtained from from B by means of an elementary row operation. Then every row of C, we have seen that, then every row of C can be expressed as a linear combination of the rows of B we have seen it earlier okay hence So what we have seen so far, how we have seen how to interpret the matrix multiplication as linear combination of the rows of the latter matrix, right? So using that fact, we immediately see that there is a matrix A such that A times B is equal to C, right? right? So on the left side, we have linear combination of the rows of B, right? Linear combination of the rows of B is equal to the matrix C. So each row of C is written as a linear combination of the rows of B. That's what we have written down here. Each row of C can be expressed as a linear combination of the rows of B. Okay. This is written using a matrix equation like this. So in general, there are many such matrices. There are many such matrices many such matrices among all such ma matrices It is convenient to choose one having a number of interesting properties. Special properties. Okay, so let me define this special kind of uh, such matrices definition. And M times, so we are concerned with some square matrices. Uh, for our purpose, we are going to 
choose the size of these matrices to be m cross m m cross and m cross m matrix is said to be an elementary matrix if it can be obtained obtained from the m times m identity matrix by means of a single elementary row operation it's important that we need we can do only one of the three basic types of elementary row operations of a single elementary row operation okay example which is example two so we are considering two times two matrices so there are five basic there are five possibilities here uh, two times two elementary matrix is necessarily one of the one of the following okay. so this is uh, corresponding so we take the identity matrix and interchange the first and the second row we end up with this matrix so this is the first type of elementary matrix um, corresponding to uh, two times two identity matrix then we can you know, um, multiply the second row with with the with the with the scalar C and add it to the first row, and that results in the following uh, elementary matrix one C zero one. Then we do the same for the second row. We multiply the first row with the scalar C. And then add it to the second row to result in the following uh, uh, elementary matrix 1 0 C 1 okay and now it's about multiplying the first row with the non zero scale you see that gives this elementary matrix corresponding to 2 times 2 identity matrix and we want C to be non zero of course and we do the same with the second row now multiplying the second row with the non-zero scalar C which gives us this matrix 1 0 0 so C this is the final type of uh, 2 times 2 elementary matrix okay of course C is also non-zero here so this is the example of uh, five possible elementary matrices of size 2 times 2 okay so now we have our very important theorem which we call a theorem 2 theorem 2 let me state it first let e be an elementary row operation and big e be the m times m elementary matrix matrix that is obtained by applying that elementary row operation on the I on the m times m identity matrix okay then for each m times n matrix a if one applies the elementary row operation e on that m times n matrix a 
one should get a matrix that can be obtained by multiplying E with A. Okay, so there is a side note here. This is how elementary row operation this function on a matrix is written right this is a function on the space of uh, n times n matrices right and the 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 the, the image of this function is going to be a matrix again an m times n matrix and that m times n matrix is precisely this matrix e times a so that this is what i am writing here so this uh, elementary row operation this function on a matrix is written explicitly in terms of matrix multiplication So it's a powerful theorem. Okay. So let me do the proof. I'll do it only for the second type of second basic type of elementary row operations. So okay. So let's do it. Um, first of all, when so think about the the matrix on the right hand side and write down the ijth entry of this um, uh, matrix. So E times A sub I J is equal to um, the sum of the sum over K's, where K runs from 1 to M. E sub I K, A sub K J. Okay. Okay, so important thing to note here is that the the product matrix here which is e times a the the entry corresponding to the i through and the j column of this product matrix e times a is obtained from the end from the from the from the entries of the ith column of E and the, sorry, ith row of E and the jth column of K, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, jth column of A. Okay, let me say it again. So the the entry corresponding to the ith row and the jth column of this product matrix E times A is obtained from the entries corresponding to the ith row of E and the jth column of A. Okay, so this is what I wanted to say. Uh, so this is the first observation. Now, now we'll we'll give a detailed proof of uh, of this theorem for the second type of ERO second basic type of ERO okay so the proof for the other two types are left as exercises okay so you'll do them by by yourself by yourselves okay so um, so before doing that recall the second basic type of ERO was given as follows So uh, go back to lecture two and refresh your memory. So um, e, e of A sub I J is equal to A I J if, if I is not equal to R. All right. And E of A R J. So 
so it it applies to to all the rows of e e of a for which the the row is not equal to r and when we have the row r here then the formula is given by the following the the entries in the rth row of this uh, of this matrix is going to be given as follows a sub rj plus c times a sub sj okay so this is what I, so in, in in i write this operation this is how you phrase it in english replacement of the rth row of a okay the rth row of a by row r row r plus c times row a row s okay here c is in the field okay. and we want r to be non -e not equal to s okay so this was the second basic type of elementary row operation so we are going to prove this theorem for this for this type of eros okay All right. so i need space let me raise things from here now apply this second type I should write basic second basic type of ERO to the M times M identity matrix matrix to obtain the m times m elementary matrix right big e is equal to small e acting small e of the identity matrix so that so this is E I K and according to this definition it is E of I of I K right I K entry of this matrix E of I and according to this definition of the elementary row operation it is going to be simply you know I sub I K right so the ikth entry of this identity matrix is nothing but the Kronecker delta ik, right? Which follows from the definition of identity matrix. And this is going to be the case when, when i is not equal to r. Okay, so let me number this equation as 1. Okay, this equation as 1. And now E sub R K is E of the identity matrix sub R K is equal to according to this formula is delta sub R K plus C times delta S K. This is the case when i is equal to r. I'm just replacing i with r, meaning that we are concerned with the r throw. And we are concerned with the i throw here, where i is not equal to r. 
this way we we are considering all the rows okay so hence so so let me erase this hence E times A sub I J right is according to the definition of matrix multiplication is going to be equal to the sum over all K's as K runs from 1 to M E sub I K times A sub K J which is equal to So, I am multiplying this guy with, with A sub KJ, right? And that results in when this gets multiplied with A sub KJ, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have simply AIJ, right? And this is the case when I is not equal to R. And when this guy gets multiplied with, you know, E sub R K, okay, and uh, so uh, this gets multiplied with this to have to to yield a R J for the first summand and for the second summand as c times a sub sj this is our equation number two so this was equation one this is equation two so let me erase this So comparing 1 with 2, what is this? This is E A sub I J. Okay. So compare this with this. Comparing 1 with 2, one immediately finds that they, they're actually, the, so observe the right hand side of these two equations, they're the same, right? which means that, uh, what is this? This is E of A, the left hand side, and the right hand side is E times A, Q. Okay, now a corollary to theorem two. So let me raise everything. Here is a corollary. to theorem 2 let A and B be N times N matrices over the field F Then B is rho equivalent to A rho equivalent to A if and only if B is equal to P times A where 
P is a product of M times M elementary matrices. Okay, so this is the statement of the corollary. Let us prove it. It's an if and only if statement. So we have to prove both the directions. Okay, so suppose B is equal to PA. We are given that these two matrices A and B is related to each other by this equality where P is a product of a certain number of elementary matrices given as follows E S all the way up to E2 times E1 with each E I being and M times M elementary matrix. Okay, and now I have to prove that B is rho equivalent to A. Prove that B is rho equivalent to A. Straightforward to prove it. You know, one can write B. So I'm just, you know, replacing B for this expression. B is equal to ES times E2 all the way times E2 times E1. And that gets multiplied with A. Okay, so how do we get uh, E E one times A? E one times A is obtained by applying an elementary row operation to A by theorem two. Then, by using the definition of row equivalence of two matrices, which says that two matrices are said to be row equivalent to each other if one can be obtained from the other by applying a finite sequence of elementary row operations, okay, one observes that E1 times A is rho equivalent to A, right? So this is how you see that um, A is rho equivalent to E1 times A. In the same way, you can immediately see that E2 times E1 times A is rho equivalent to E1 times A. And since E1 times A is rho equivalent to A, one concludes that A is rho equivalent to this guy, E2 times E1 times A. So continuing this way, one can immediately conclude that A is equivalent to these matrices E S times all the way up to E2 times E1 times A. So A is rho equivalent to this matrix. So this is one direction. So let us do it for the other direction. I mean, let us do the proof of the corollary for the other direction. So for which, I assume that B is rho equivalent to A. Now suppose that B is rho equivalent to A. Okay. 
now invoke the definition of rho equivalence by the definition of rho equivalence B is obtained from A by application of a finite sequence of elementary row operations. Finite sequence of elementary row operations. Okay. Namely, so I take those finite sequence that finite sequence of elementary row operations as E1, E2, all the way up to ES. That is B is equal to ES. So these are the functions, okay, acting on the space of M times N matrix. Space of N times M times N matrices, right? Okay? So E2, E1 of A, this is our equation number 3. Okay, so now by theorem 2, which we proved a while ago, now by theorem 2, there exists, sorry, there exist elementary matrices E sub S, E sub 2, E sub 1, such that E1 of A is equal to E1 times A, E2 of E1 of A is going to be equal to E2 times E1 times A and ES of this expression on the right side E2 of E1 of A is equal to ES dot 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 all the way up to E2 and then E1 times a, right? So then by 3, this equation, therefore, by 3, 1 has B to be equal to the multiplication of all these elementary matrices with A. So this was the corollary, QED. Now I suggest some exercises from section 1.6. Let me list the number of the problems. Suggested exercises. Section 1.6. Page number 21, Hoffman and Kunz. Problem number 3, problem number 2, problem number 4, 5, 7, and problem number 8. Okay? Alright, so I take a break here. So in the next segment, we'll come back and start with invertible matrices. Thank you for attending the first segment of the fourth lecture.